Hello family, we thank God for today. We give him glory, honour and adoration. Yesterday, the word that I brought was about um, how the Lord says, um, or we were to take note of the fact that the results of faith may span a long period of time. Unfortunately, because I try to do this podcast so that it doesn't exceed a certain amount of time, I was not able to share a few things that I think is really, really important that we bear in mind as far as that particular topic is concerned. So today I want to carry on with what I I started sharing yesterday as far as the results of faith is concerned. Um, Just to recap, yesterday I had mentioned about how there are times when we would have to wait, even from the time that God may give us a word that we need to hold on in faith until the fulfillment of that word. And that word may take a long period of time. And what we, what we need to do in those moments is to continually carry on holding on in faith, irrespective of what the time frame might um, look like or might be. But in terms of the results of faith, What are some of the results of faith that we can think of in scripture? So we know that in Noah's case, it was that because he held on to the promise of God and obeyed God as a result of his faith, he, his wife, his sons and his son's wives and all the creatures that had gone into the ark with him, their lives were spared. I cannot begin to imagine the emotions they would have had the very day that they came out of the ark, knowing that because of his faith in God, his life and the lives of his sons and his son's wife, his wife inclusive, had been spared. That in all the earth, this vast earth that was um, before them, belonged to them. They were they and the creatures that had come from the ark were the only ones who had survived the destruction of the earth. Just think or put yourself in that picture. How overwhelmed they would have been. One, the fact that they had left this earth and when they were leaving it was full of people, family, friends, loved ones, haters inclusive. And then they come back to something new that they'd never seen in their life before. It must have been a a situation where it would have been full of mixed emotions because they would have lost loved ones. But I can be sure without a shadow of a doubt that they would have been so joyful equally at the fact that God chose them and decided to favor them and decided to honor them. So the result of the faith that Noah had was that he survived, he and his family. They did not die along with the people of the earth. And that God began a whole new creation with him and his children. And so for those of us who live now on the face of this earth, we are alive because of one man's faith and trust and obedience to God that he chose to live a righteous life because from then on we know that all the nations and everything else that came about came about because God started this earth as we know it afresh. And so again, it is to show that we're all connected in one way or the other, irrespective of whatever nation, tribe we come from. We are all descended from Noah and his family. And so today you and I are privileged to be alive Because God chose not to destroy Noah and his family along with all of mankind during the floods. Another person that I think of whose faith and the impact of his faith even still affects our generation today is Abraham. And so when I read Abraham, um, I said Abraham, sorry, Genesis 22 verse 17 to 19, it says, indeed, I will greatly bless you. And I will greatly multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens and like the sun on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gates of their enemies as conquerors. 
through your seed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have heard and obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his servants and they got up and went with him to Beersheba and Abraham settled in Beersheba. This is the promise that God gave to Abraham after he had obeyed the word of the Lord that had come to him, which was that he was to offer up his only begotten son, his only son, Isaac, the very son that God had said to Abraham he would use to cause him to become the father of many nations. Because of his faith and absolute trust in God's goodness, his love, his kindness, he did not withhold the son. And as the Lord God Almighty asked him, commanded him to stop just as he was about to lift that knife and to offer up Isaac, the scripture I read is the blessing that God pronounced concerning Abraham. And so even when we go to Acts chapter 3, verse 24 to verse 25, it says, Indeed, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also announced these days, you are the sons, descendants of the prophets and hires of the covenant, which God made with your father, saying to Abraham, and in your seed, descendants, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I will read verse 26 as well. It says, it was for you first of all that God raised up his servant and son Jesus and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. So God had pronounced a blessing upon Abraham, told him that he would make him his descendants many, they will be very numerous. And we know, even to this day, that there are so many other nations who trace their descent to Abraham. And so, even to this day, the fulfillment of God and the covenant he made with Abraham is being fulfilled. And it is interesting also to note that when God said to him that in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God had an even bigger picture, a bigger honor that he wanted to bestow upon Abraham. All because he walked in faith and trusted God when it seemed as if what God had said he will do was impossible. And so when we think about the genealogy, of Jesus, which we find in Matthew chapter 1, from verse 2, it starts off by letting us know that Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, who became the twelve tribes of Ju Israel. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Abin Aminadab, Aminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz by Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David the king. David was the father of Solomon by Bathsheba, who had been the wife of Uriah. Verse 7. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Ammon, and Ammon the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah, also called Coniah and Jehoiakim, and his brothers at the time of the deportation exile to Babylon. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abihud, Abihud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Akim, and Akim the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eliezer, Eliezer the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah, Christ. So because of his faith, 
his confident trust that God who had given him the promise was more than able and in, he decided not to look on his own frail body, neither did Sarah. Because of that act, to this day, the results of the faith of Abraham speaks in your life and speaks in my life because he is one from whom Jesus descended. David was a man of faith who also was a descendant of Abraham. And the, story, and the genealogy goes on to let us know that maybe when um, Abraham at the time was even trusting God, all he probably wanted, and we know that all he had asked God for was a child. He just wanted somebody who would inherit him. But because he had faith in assurance in God, believing God, having confidence of the things that his physical senses could not see, God chose him and honored him by causing him to become an ancestor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thereby fulfilling what God said to him, that in your seed will all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because of Jesus, you and I are blessed. Because of Jesus, you and I have a salvation. Because of Jesus, tomorrow we can look to, to tomorrow, trust in God that tomorrow will be a better day. We can have hope for tomorrow because of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, praise God, demonstrates to you and I that God is indeed a God who is faithful to his promise. That any promise he makes, no matter how long that promise takes, it will be fulfilled because the word of the Lord is true. His word never returns to him void. And so when God is admonishing you and I to walk in faith, let us not think about the now. Let us not think about, oh, what would be the result of that faith? Maybe you're thinking in your mind that it would be impacts you today. But from what we read in scripture, your faith and your faith and the results of your faith could be speaking even many thousands of years when you're gone or until Jesus comes. And mind you, it is because of the faith that you and I have in Jesus Christ that we have a promise of an eternal life, not in hell, but in heaven, in the very place that God himself has prepared. So let us know that when we're going through the challenges of life and we're being told to hold on in faith, to press on in faith, let us know that a great reward awaits us because of he in whom we have believed not in the arm of the flesh, not in man's wisdom or counsel, but in the wisdom and in the counsel of God. So today I'm going to go over our memory verse, which is Matthew 21, 22. And whatever you ask for in prayer, believing you will receive. The Lord give you the grace to be persistent in prayer, to be faithful in prayer and to have relentless faith when you pray. Because he has told us that whatever we ask in prayer, believing, we will receive. And he has also told us from previous memory verses we've looked at, that so long as it is the will of God, whatever it is that we're asking for, it will be given to us. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.